Okay, we're here. Oh, I forgot my light, but I think I have enough light in the room. Yeah, hey. you look good. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. We are here once again bringing to you some informative um, information, hopefully, that you can use in your business amid COVID 19. Um, as I've always stated in the beginning of these conversations, that the Signature CEO Conference got postponed due to our friend COVID-19. And so in the interim, I'm bringing to you our speakers so that they can share some wisdom with you to get over this hurdle of COVID-19 and just dive in your business. You know, yes, we were all shocked and, you know, overwhelmed at first. And I hope that feeling has kind of like subsided with people. And now you're like, okay, let's get back to business. You know, my business is still here. I still have to make it work because whenever things do kick back off, we wanna be ready and prepared. So that's why I brought our speakers here to us. And so today we have Ms. Myrna Dharami of Myrna Dharami and Co, is that correct? Yeah, Myrna and Co, Myrna Dharami, it's all good. Yes, there you go. She has her own brand, her own name because she's just that fabulous, everyone. Oh, I love that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so Myrna's going to come and talk to us today about five tech tips you can use in your business during COVID-19 and not just during COVID-19, but beyond. But now is a great time since we're in this kind of lull and waiting period for our events to <clears throat> kick back off. Time to get in there, get used to these platforms, you know, smooth air all the kinks out and so that you can be ready and move forward. So I'm going to turn it over to Myrna so that she can talk about her five tips. But Myrna, before you get into that, can you kind of highlight who you are, which I think everyone knows who you are, but just highlight who you are and what you do. All right. So my name is Myrna Dharami, everybody. Hey, how are you doing? I hope everybody is well and staying as mindful as possible during these times because I know it's crazy. Um, but just a little bit about me. I am the, co the founder of Myrna & Co, which is a technology consulting business. Um, I basically translate the difficult language of technology for my clients and act as their technology advisor. Um, so all things tech, I kind of understand very well and I can put it in digestible, tangible terms so that you can then make better decisions. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, I guess you want me to just dive into the five tips? Yes, if you okay. can dive into the five tips. So okay. first of your tips that you have is basically what you just said, jump into video right now. Video right practice, now. So, practice, practice. So exactly. explain that to us. So in 2019, I had done a little series. I do this pretty much at the end of every year, kind of like a prediction of what people or businesses should be either going into implementing or at least starting to look at as far as incorporating into their practice of marketing or technology. And video was my, I think, number two or number one, one or two, like one of those, like, if you have not joined on to the video bandwagon now or yet, now is the time to do so. And the reason for that back then was because of all the stats that were coming back from 2019 and how video was getting absorbed by people. And I mean, I'll just talk about some of those tips or some of those um, stats just to kind of get your mind feeling like, okay, why would I want to do this? Even though now retrospect after COVID, it's kind of like inevitable, but here's some cool stats about video that I was like, OMG, why are we not all doing this? 96% of all consumers between the ages of 18 and 34. So if you have a demographic in your business that you're targeting that is in the 20s to 30s, they are using video and watching it 96% of the time. That's what they do. They want to watch video more than they want to do anything else. The other thing that uh, I thought was pretty interesting is that um, users spend about 88% more time on websites that have video than not. So platforms like Insta, like Facebook, you know, all the things we're doing now, this is where people are. And I'm sure this stat is probably even higher now that we're all home and being quarantined. But the, for, the point is, this is how people were really wanting to absorb and maintain some type of content absorption. Um, the other thing that I thought was really cool and really interesting from a business standpoint is that if you were to use the word video in an email, sub, like your subject or even like the preview text, people were more apt to open up that email, about seven to 10% more apt to open them up than if you were just sending a regular email blast. 
which again, triggers that whole, oh, if I'm doing video, they may be more prompted to open it. So that was that. And then the other thing that was pretty interesting and something to just note was that consumers are predominantly viewing video content in the portrait, meaning the vertical um, orientation than landscape. Because I know one of the barriers that a lot of my clients used to have with video was, you know, I don't have a production crew. I don't have the right cameras. I don't have all the right stuff to make it look high level. But the reality is consumers are now consuming the content that are coming off of our phones because they're looking at it through things like Facebook Live, Instagram Live. And so the, the video paradigm and the barrier of trying to create video has shifted. So now you fast forward to today, right? And I realized this too, I was like, oh my gosh, now this is like the way we are communicating. Like we don't know, we no longer are relying on email or text. Like everybody, whether you are in business for yourself or you're working for an actual company, you're utilizing video to now communicate. And so now post COVID, it's like, and I said this, I think in one of my other webinar chats or whatever, I was like, there's three major C's that everybody needs right now. It's one, connection, two, communication, and then three, community. And technology and video is the mechanism that everybody's using. So my thing is, if you're not trying to at least practice yourself on, on video, like getting used to seeing yourself on video, because I know my introverts, I'm one of them who was very anti-video. It's like, now's the time to kind of play with it or, you know, basically like practice, 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 get your craft right, because you're going to need it moving forward because it's now going to be a norm and people are gonna expect for you to be in some kind of way, shape or form showing your face and on video for your business. So there's that. All right, so tip number two, are we ready to jump into that one? Okay, tip number two is to take some time out to do an audit of your digi home. So we're all staying home right now, right? Hashtag stay home. I was like, you know what? We also have a digi home. Our digi home is our website. So aside from what you look like on Instagram and all these other social media platforms and digital touch points, it's a good time while you have the time just take a moment out and like do an audit of your website and not just do the audit from your desktop and looking at it um, just from your desktop sake. I want you to do this audit from your mobile device. And the reason why I say that is because again, everybody is here. And so they're probably going to engage with you faster and even um, first vote on, your, on their mobile device. So things like you should ask yourself when you're doing this audit. Is your website currently reflecting the current version of you? Because I know for me, I always said this, like websites are kind of like past tense because like you spend all this time doing your website, you get it up and then you don't touch it again for like another six months or so. So it's actually like past, meaning that was where you were, but is it still reflecting what you're doing now? Like, are you blogging if you do have a blog? It, have you blogged any like recent time to kind of like, give an update to your, to your website. Um, let's see, things like your site being responsibly mobile, meaning or that it's responding to mobile devices. By now, if you did not get the memo that mobile is a factor when it comes to optimizing your, your web presence, um, please, you know, I hope you take the time out to do a little audit of your website to see if it is mobily responsive. And basically what that means is when somebody goes to this device and they see your website, if they have to pinch or make anything bigger to get to any type of content, nine times out of 10, it's probably not mobile friendly. So you wanna make sure that that is on point. And by now, like I said, so many platforms, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, all of them pretty much have mobile responsive or mobile friendly versions that they adapt your site to. So just make sure that that's on point. Um, another thing, uh, I mentioned blogging. When is the last time you blogged, if you have it all? Um, that's something to check in with. And the reason why that's important is because what's happening right now, Google and search engines, all of them actually are basically scrubbing the web for content, especially now because everybody's home, everybody's searching and everybody's online. So the goal is if you have new content that you're placing on your website, Google, that will be a trigger to a search engine, like, oh, there's something new and they're going to want to see if they can scan it, see what it's about, and hopefully connect it to whoever may be looking for it. So if you have not blogged in a long time, I advise that you pick something to blog about. Definitely do that. Um, something else about taking care of your digi home, check to see if you have any broken links on your site. That's one of those things that people don't even realize, like, because again, everything's kind of past tense. 
people have changed, websites have changed, links have changed. Like click around when you're on your mobile device and see if it actually is taking the people where you want them to go. And if it is, great. If it's not, then you can have the, the time to fix it. And then lastly, we can go into SEO, but as a whole, there's a whole like breakdown that I have of a checklist to say, is your site optimized for search engines? But if you were to at least do the mini audit and just kind of like check yourself right now, I think that would serve you very well. So that was my tip number two. Tip number three is visit the analytics of not just your DigiHome, but all the platforms that you're on right now. So right now everybody is doing TikTok and you know Instagram and all these things. If you're a business, it would be good. And I think it would be advisable to kind of do a check-in to see what types of content, aside from seeing your likes as in terms of an analytics, like let's see like what type of content people are engaging with, how many comments are coming through, how many impressions, like that kind of thing. I advise everybody to just take a look, not just on the platforms that they're active on, but also look at the platforms that they're not active on because it might even surprise you. Like, for example, I had a client who she had done YouTube videos, I think like two years ago, that was when she was all about YouTube. And she kind of fell off that and went more onto Instagram because she felt that she was getting more engagement there. So all energies went towards there, did a little mini audit, come to find out her YouTube videos were getting a lot of play in the last month or so. So she's like, wait a minute, who knew? Like now I guess I need to pay attention to my YouTube and so here we are. So just do a little check-in to see what is going on and check your analytics. And then number four, take some time out to do an audit of all the tech things you are using. For example, my people who are using Zoom, my people who are using Zapier, um, Slack, like all the things that you use to run your business, your email, like if you're using Microsoft or if you're using Gmail, just do an audit of what you're doing and if you're paying for them. Because right now in this new post or current COVID situation, a lot of these platforms are offering more incentives and they're also being a lot more forgiving because they know a lot of people are on these platforms or using them. So they're giving some, some extra modifications, updates, all the things. So you wanna make sure that you're looking into this to see if you're actually benefiting from these offerings or even if it's something you even need. Like I had a scenario where I was using two applications doing the same thing because the one upgraded and the one was a lot less. And so I was like, well, why am I gonna pay for both? So I just stopped paying for the one and realized I'm just gonna have the one that was less, you know, as, in terms of what I was paying to do both the things that I had them doing. So now's a good time to check in and see like, all the things. And I know for me, I use a lot between Basecamp, Asana, 17 Hats, HoneyBook. Like I have all of them. I'm affiliates for a lot of them. So that's one thing I'm grateful for where I don't necessarily have to pay for them, but be on the lookout and see like what they're offering and see if you can just kind of like refine that a little bit. And then the last tip I have, um, which thank you, Siri, for letting me know during COVID, <laughs> um, she alarmed me that I had a like 35% increase of my usage on my phone due to the fact that I didn't have anything else better to do, I guess. So I was just always on my tech. And it got to the point where my tech actually started creeping back into my bedroom. Like I had a rule where I was like, okay, no phones near my, my bed, no laptop when I go to bed. And somehow, some way during COVID, started creeping back in where I had my phone at night, you know, and I'm like in my bed. So I realized I had to do a little check in and say, okay, you know what? I know technology, I'm so grateful, grateful for you. You have been allowing me to communicate. You have been allowing me to still connect and you're allowing me to still maintain some kind of community, but it is also good to take a time out and actually give yourself a curfew with tech um, and give yourself like time away. So all that being said, like I said, I know technology is amazing, but at the same time um, being present, especially at times like this and being able to check in with yourself and think about your mindset and see all the things that you want to do moving forward, time to reflect is also good. So curfew on the tech is what I advise for my last tip. And that's it. Awesome. All <laughs> right. So with the technology that is out there and you're saying get a hold of video, um, besides Zoom, what we're using right now, are there any other platforms that you would recommend for people to kind of utilize in their business? Yeah, absolutely. So depending on the business, because um, I, I never describe or prescribe or diagnose businesses the same. Um, 
depending on the business, it will vary. So the one I would say, obviously, aside from a Zoom situation is YouTube. Um, now is the time. If you have any type of education um, in your business where you're either educating either your clients or a mass audience, like you want to actually teach people a skill set that you have, YouTube might be the thing for you in terms of getting that ramped up. Because again, like I said, my one client, we didn't even realize that she all of a sudden had a bump up like thousands of views on some of her videos. So I would say YouTube is definitely a platform. Um, the other platform that I know um, people have been really using is IGTV and Facebook Live. Uh, obviously that's what we're doing here because those can also live on those platforms and gain engagement and continue to build your community. So there's that. Then you can also own your own um, video like there's an app that I particularly love it's called um, Wisteria with or Wistia I said Wisteria Wistia where you actually get control of your content a little bit more um, via video um, where it's not being housed on another platform rather you can actually house it within your own world um, so there's that too but I would definitely suggest like I said YouTube if you're educating um, IG and Facebook if you are trying to maintain and build your community and establish your platforms. Absolutely, I would say those would be great and they're free, so. Okay, and can you elaborate a little bit more? You said to use video in the text of your blogs or something, kind of go back to that again. Yeah, so especially for my event planners and my and my people in the wedding industry. So I did this, I think I spoke at some an event in January, right before all of this went down where I did a little study and I was like, let's just do a, a breakdown. And so I put into Google search um, how to use Trello, right? And when I did that, obviously what ended up coming up on the search results was a big like real estate space for this one big video that said, how to use Trello. And then underneath that, there were like four other like thumbnails. Those are those little snippets of video, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube of how to use Trello. Then I put in there just hypothetically, I was like, let's see what I, if I were to put in how to pick a wedding date, especially that's a question right now. I'm sure that a lot of brides are asking uh, when I put that in, no videos came up. And the last, like the first thing that came up was like dated 2019. And so that was like, hmm, here's an opportunity here to create a video on how to pick a wedding date. Reason being is because one video gets trumped more than text or copy in this, especially because I said video is more absorbs now than ever and google got that memo so they give love to video more than they would to anything that was written um but so you see how i'm saying like this is how video could help like if you were to create a blog and in the blog you created a youtube video that was also talking about that topic you have it on youtube you have it on your blog it actually will give you more real estate love from Google's perspective than if you just did it, just writing a, a normal blog. Good to know. Well, these videos I've been doing with all of you speakers have been going to the Signature CEO blog and embedding the YouTube video. So there we go. good to know, because the Signature CEO conference has its own YouTube channel. If you all did not know, you can go and see all videos that have been created by the Signature CEO Conference, such as this, recaps of um, past conferences and stuff. So go to our YouTube channel. There we go. Awesome. Um, and then just the last thing, the three C's, I like that you said connection, connection, communication, and community. Um, those are the three reasons why we should be in video because we're connecting with everyone in our community and we're communicating what it is we need to get across without physically being present with that person. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Are there any questions? You have some alums on here. <coughs> Excuse uh, me. Let's see here. Dewan Jones says, hey, yeah. ladies. Murder sharing actionable nuggets as always. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I hope you're well. I'm just like, oh my gosh. See, now this is where I wish I could see people and be like, hey, but yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Lori Carruthers, Lori Lewis says hello. Hello. Um, all the way from Detroit. Takesha Edwards says hello. Aww. Who is local? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Myrna um, before we go? Um, video is 
is king right now. So we need to start implementing video into our businesses. Exactly. Any questions? I would say, and if you are going to do it, like own your craft on it, like this is also the time to transcribe them and transcript them. So, cause again, the one thing about video Although people love to absorb it, in order to have it really connect with the search engines, you're gonna need the words to back it up and typing words, I mean. So transcribing them is always good and also transcripting. Cause people, I think people got the memo for the transcribing cause you see it on some videos where you'll see the words at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But transcripting is actually taking those words, typing them in so they're attached to that video content, hmm. so. Okay. All right. That sounds like a whole nother segment right there. <laughs> I know, right? That's like another how-to, right? But yeah, there, there's there's the whole concept of, okay, now that I'm good with video, now how do I optimize it? So that would probably be like chapter two of all this, but yeah. And then I have one quick question for you. So on YouTube, YouTube asks you when you insert your videos to tag them, does that really work? Does that work like SEO tags or yes. am I saying that right? <laughs> Yeah, the SEO tag, same thing as the, yeah. Anytime there is a tag in the world of code or in the world of tech, think of a price tag. Like when you're about to buy something, right? You see that outfit and you're like, oh my gosh, that shirt is amazing. The first thing you do is you look for the price tag, which the price tag is gonna tell you more information about that you know, product, AKA the price. So anytime you think of tag in the world of tech, it's basically the goal is to give you more information. But in this world of tech, it's the search engines and the robots that are looking for, how do I get more information about this item that you just uploaded on the web? So in the world of YouTube, tagging is great because it actually allows for them, meaning the robots and the search engines to literally categorize the content that you put up. So yes, it is helpful. Um, we have two questions here. One is from speaker Nadia Anderson. She wants to know, is the transcription software built into the video platform? No. So there are apps, of course, for that, um, several different ones, several different versions. There are people and services that actually offer transcription as well. So, um, you know, that's one of those things where, uh, if we can take that back, Zoom does have transcription. Let me say that because they do for the paid version. So it depends on the platform. So if you're paying for Zoom and you actually record a video and you post it into the cloud of Zoom, because Zoom allows for you to store some of the video on there. Um, they actually do annotate and and transcript transcript them. So nice there know. are some platforms that do do it, but if you're going to create like a YouTube video and you're doing it yourself, nine times out of ten you got to get another app, third party to do it or a service, and then they'll do it. Okay. So I have the paid platform for Zoom. Now you got a little homework assignment for me <laughs> have to go investigate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Takesha wants to know, how do you think this situation will impact the service industry tech-wise going forward? You know what, I feel like we're all going to shift. Um, you know, specifically for me, I have a lot of clients who own bridal salons, and that is a hands-on service-oriented business. Like, aside from the venue and the event stuff, it's like they cannot do their jobs physically without some kind of touch there, right? So I do see though that it is going to shift because right now some of them are offering virtual appointments. I see that whole virtual thing really, really taking off where people are gonna to start to actually incorporate virtualization as a part of their process more so than they were before. Um, Cause I could see in the future, instead of wasting an hour to have a consultation with your client, you can do half of it virtual save the time both ways or you know 20 percent of it virtual and then spend like the more quality time of where you really need to be in physical connection um doing that part so i mean i could definitely see in our industry from a service oriented perspective that virtualization is going to really play now a role more importantly than it was before okay i know i've been utilizing video a lot before the whole COVID 19 even started yeah um yeah. particularly with certain clients like i have um one set of clients they're both doctors so it was like hard trying to plan all these appointments meet face to face so we started doing zoom even yeah. doing zoom to to talk with other vendors now when it came time to oh we have to do a tasting or we have to do the floral mock-up presentation those are basically the only two meetings that we would go to like in person right and so now since the whole COVID-19 thing is going on basically every single one of my customers 
clients. That's what we're doing. We're doing Zoom videos with every single vendor and even yeah. doing virtual site visits. So some businesses are, you know, they have like one or two people left behind and I've been able to call them up and say, hey, take your phone with you. Let's do a video call and let's show this room to them. And so it's been working. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like that's going to be the big shift. I think everybody's going to realize that all the time that we probably were spending, like, right, you know, spending time together, not to say it wasn't quality or that it wasn't meant, you know, have needed to have, it didn't need to happen. But I think now in this time with us all thinking, how do we optimize this experience for everybody? Like virtual, I think is gonna play a major role in a yeah. lot of things. You definitely increase your productivity. Yeah. Absolutely. I think so, because you're not wasting that time in the car. Driving, with that's what I was going to say, too. Market, you know, a 15-mile drive can turn into an hour and 30 minutes. You know me. One way. <laughs> my clients in D.C. know I have a window period. It's like, look, if it's not between the hours of 10 and 2, like, I'm not coming because, yeah, yeah, I will be in the car. For yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, I've been dealing with clients since, I want to say, like, three years virtually. Because um, mm -hmm. I have clients much all across the United States plus international and so for me I don't know I, I just discovered virtual meetings and I was like this is amazing I don't have to travel as much because there was a point where I was traveling a lot back and forth to New York and I was like something's got to give because at that time my kids were only what maybe like four and Nathan was like one or something so it was like too much um, but yeah so I do think that's what's going to happen I think I did a slide that said you know, because right now everybody's trying to digitalize themselves, like whether it's a digital product, everybody's trying to virtualize themselves because, you know, you can't really be in person. I was like, but just make sure you're optimizing that process too. So it's not just digitalize and virtualize, but make sure you're optimizing too. So that's, that's the game that I feel like we're going to be playing more now. Okay, awesome. Well, Myrna, I can't wait to see you at the Signature I CEO know. Conference whenever we announce that date. Um, the Signature <laughs> CEO Conference has not gone away. We're just waiting to everything subsides here with COVID-19 and we'll be back. We'll have Myrna and all of our illustrious speakers there coming to educate you about your business. Um, and I think this is gonna be something that we're gonna need more than ever once we come out of this. Um, so please continue to follow us. We'll have amazing, great content. We're going to continue to share with you um, in the interim. Um, but when we do announce that date, we will open it up for just a limited period of time, taking a limited number of people because we do want to keep our format small. Also at the Signature CEO Conference, we're going to announce the new format going forward for 2021, uh, which I am totally excited to share with everyone. Myrna, thank you for being one of my biggest supporters of the conference. Ever since I met you in Barbados, we've yeah. been tight, girl. Yes, I'm the OG, as I call it. But yes, no, thank you, Tara, because like I said, I do believe what you're doing um, in pouring love into this industry and all this community that you have is, is amazing. So thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you. And if you happen to miss this, uh, ladies and gentlemen that are following, you need to go back. Um, this will, like Marna said, it's going to stay live within our Facebook group. Also, all of the videos are going to be shared on the Signature CEO Conference blog. Um, I have most of the ones that have passed already up on the blog. So if you want to go back and review those videos, you can go there and murders will be there soon. Anyway, continue to follow us, continue to support us, giving you virtual hugs to everyone too. One day we'll be able to hug each other soon. Exactly. I know. I'm just like, oh my gosh, that day when they're just like, everybody go out. This is gonna be like, first of all, we're going to be a little scared, but then we're also going to be like, Oh my gosh, I can actually like reach out. I'll touch somebody. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we're all in this together, I guess. That's the that's the one thing that's kind of like, okay, well, you know, we all got in the same situation. Exactly. I talked to a client today in Germany, same thing. It was like, see, we're all in this together. So. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Well, Lori says she can't wait. Lori, we can't wait to see you too. Exactly. Yeah, I can't wait to see all you guys. Like I said. Exciting times coming. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we will see everyone soon. And continue to follow us. And I'll be bringing you more great information. Bye, Marna. Bye, honey. Take care.
Bye.